Rutgers. This is Miss Kim Seaver, and you are tuning in to episode two of the Alberta Worker Podcast. Thanks for joining in, and I am very excited to welcome our first guest to the show, Christy Thomas, who is, happens to be the president of the Lethbridge and District Labor Council. Thanks for being with us today, Christy. Hi, Kim. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor to be a part of your podcast. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm very excited about our interview. I've known you for a few years now, and um, yeah, you were one of the first people I thought of just because of your role in the local labor community. And I thought it'd be great to, to have you on here and have you talk a little bit about your, your life history and how you got into labor politics and, and, and that sort of thing. So let's just get straight into it. Tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, where you grew up and what your family life was like and, you know, your first job, where you did education, all that kind of stuff. And we'll see where it goes. Sure. Thanks, Kimmy. And yeah, happy to share. So I grew up in the Kootenays, British Columbia. I always joke that I grew up in Socialist BC because we were, had a, an NDP government for such a long time. Um, I did come from a union household. My dad was a steel worker. He worked for tech and my mom worked uh, for the provincial government. So I was no stranger to labor and unions at that time. I remember one of my first memories as a child is my father was on strike and we had like a food bank or like a place where we could go to, to pick up supplies um, as, as a strike support. And I remember being so excited because they had juice boxes and we were allowed to to take some juice boxes home as a kid I don't think we had juice boxes at that time and I just thought oh my strikes are cool um <laughs> meaning I mean at the time I knew my father and the job action probably wasn't where they wanted to be as a steel worker and uh, I'm working on a collective agreement bargaining but uh as a kid I was like super keen on it so um juice boxes radicalized you <laughs> You could say that for sure. I, I remember, you know, safety was always a big concern when my dad worked. You know, I think that uh, the steel workers and, and their collective bargaining rights to, to make sure safety was like at the forefront of his job was such a big thing for him and, and for me as well. Um, in terms of my first job, I'm from a small town named Casagar, and I worked at a family run print shop, which was super fun. I really enjoyed that experience. But I really wanted to work at McDonald's because all my friends were working at McDonald's and I remember pretty much begging for an interview to work at McDonald's. And finally, I, I got the call and I, and I did end up working there for a couple of years while I was going to college. Um, yes, that was I have my first real job was working yeah. at McDonald's. And, and it was really fun. And I know it's funny now that I'm really involved in the labor movement. And we all know that uni uh, McDonald's are not keen on the unionization movement. <laughs> But I did learn a lot there in terms of scheduling and, and being really, um, I guess, a responsible worker. I didn't know anything about the union at that time. I, I mean, I wish I did. Um, but I was going to school for co in college um, in the Kootenays there uh, in biology. And I then transferred out to Lethbridge in 2004 to finish my degree at the University of Lethbridge. I got my undergrad in 2006. Uh, I continued to work at McDonald's throughout that time to pay the bills and tuition. And I was super fortunate after that, uh, where I finished my degree, I had a co-op position at the Lethbridge Research Center, which is where I, I still work today. It actually turned into a couple contracts, precarious work here, terms, etc. And then it finally turned into an indeterminate position in, in 2011. So uh, I still work there. Super fortunate that there's an excellent, amazing union there, uh, the Public Service Alliance of Canada, proud union member, proud agriculture member. And it's really there that I really got super involved in the movement itself and I gained a better understanding of the value of a union. I mean, I know growing up, I knew what unions were, but I never had a job that was unionized until I started working at the Lethbridge Research Center. And I've been there ever since, super involved with PSAC since about 2010. I'd say my only unionized job I had, I started out with precarious work too, similar to you. Like I started out as a practicum student, then I got like a term contract and then I got like some, something else. I can't remember what it was now. It's been, it's been years. And then finally I got full-time permanent status. So yeah. And it shouldn't really have to be that way, you know, with the terms and the indeterminate. I know, I think I went through three contracts, really not knowing what the next step was and totally. the, the project was still ongoing or ending. And, you know, it was just, it was a difficult time. And when I look back to it, I didn't really realize it. <laughs> I think that's the benefit of youth, right? <laughs> it wasn't that stressful. 
<laughs> but uh, looking back, I am still very fortunate to be working there full time. So were you a research technician as a co-op student as well? Yeah. Yeah. I started in uh, like a molecular biology lab and um, I was fortunate enough to get hired on with that scientist. And then she nice. moved on and I, I got on to a different scientist and he actually helped facilitate me get my master's degree as well. So uh, very lucky opportunities um, at the research center. But it was actually a mutual friend of ours. Sherry Hunt, who introduced me to PSAC, she suggested I attend a young workers conference in Edmonton. And at the time I was like, okay, free trip to Edmonton. <laughs> I'll check it out. I took my boyfriend at the time. He went up to Edmonton and you know what? That is really where it all started. I, I was able to sit in a room with young workers who were facing the same type of precarious work in, like in, instances that I was going through. I got to meet some really great PSAC leaders in the region who kind of were really wanting to facilitate facilitate the young workers within PSAC because that was really a shortcoming in the public service is that we were really, you know, young workers didn't really see if they had a place in their union. A lot of it too comes down to the fact that, especially in my field of work, is you don't really get your first job until, you know, several years of schooling. I also really got a better understanding of the structure of the union. It's so complicated to kind of understand where I as a rank and file member would fit into the, the greater structure of the union. So that's really, really where it took off. And honestly, I always say that it kind of hooked me then and it's been full-time activism with PSAC since then 2010 or so. I always say that I'm very very privileged um, and fortunate to work in, in a workplace that really values safe working conditions, you know appropriate working hours, uh, workload life balance. I mean there's always room for improvement. I mean every collective agreement we're always looking for better gains but that type of workplace has really allowed me to kind of really work within the union on some of the social justice aspects that the union really stands for. Like PSAC has some really great movements when it comes to um, advocating for universal childcare or ending gender-based violence or, you know, the work that we've done with the murdered and missing Indigenous women and girls. Um, right. You know, that's a lot of work that I see so important and so it's like my where my passion lies. That's something I'm really grateful for in terms of the, the broader movement movement to, to give me that ability to, to work within those institutions and organizations to make things better. Cool. And so have you been involved? I mean, other than these committees that you've been on, have you been involved with organizing within the union? In terms of like organizing new workplaces? Organizing new workplaces or even like working on bargaining committees or being in like you know, shop steward or other leadership positions, that sort of thing? Yes, definitely. Within my local, I've taken on the role of, um, well, I'm the local secretary and I also am a, ch a shop steward. Okay. I haven't had the opportunity to be a part of a bargaining committee. It is quite difficult um, because we bargain at the national level. I haven't had that opportunity, but I have been to a bargaining convention where we are able to submit some demands, prioritize and debate, uh, which we'd like to see going forward for the next bargaining cycle. So we are actually in currently, the Treasury Board is currently in bargaining just over a year now. Um, wow. Yeah, and in terms of some of the other work, Lethbridge, we were really thankful, the Public Service Alliance of Canada, I was part of the founding executive of the Women's Committee in 2013. I have to toot our horn here, but the Lethbridge Women's Committee has been able to do some really amazing things across Canada. We're small and mighty, and I'm really proud of the work that we've done through that subcommittee of the PSAC. So are there specific accomplishments that the committee has done that you're really yeah, proud of? Yeah, so um, we have done some really great initiatives around the Universal Child care program. Um, I know we've sent some pretty effective postcard campaigns. Um, and I actually met a lot of my union friends at an activist event where we were knitting uteruses at the OWL in a protest to uh, some of the anti-abortion and anti-reproductive um, choices that were coming down the line um, from our, con our conservative MP at the time. So we had made these all these uteruses and we had actually um, delivered them to his desk and said, hands off our uterus. So that was really exciting. Um, within our broader, within our union structure itself, we have advocated for um, alternative methods of birth control. Our uh, public service healthcare plan actually didn't have provisions for alternatives besides the pill. Uh, and so we had set, produced a lot of resolutions. We made it worked its way up to the national structure and the union was able to make that change. We have actually made changes within the public service health care plan now that does include alternative forms of birth control. So, so that was a big win for us. And I think that was one of the first times when I realized, wow, you know, we can actually make change from one resolution. I know it's a slow process. It is really empowering when you can actually see a final result there. 
So yeah, that's pretty cool. Maybe talk about how you got involved with uh, the labor council. Yeah, for sure. So so Lethbridge actually has a really strong history, and I'm sure you you're real aware of um, how important labor is in Lethbridge. Um, in 1905, the Lethbridge Labor Council was one of the first that was um, formed in Alberta, right. and it's something that our labor council is super proud of. And you know, and didn't our labor council like the formation of our labor council lead to the um, Alberta Federation of yeah, and so in 1912, so a few years after our formation, um, we Lethbridge held the founding convention for the Alberta Federation. Right. So, right. so strong history there, and it's it's really great to be a part of something that has such a great long history and that has continued to make change within our community. I was elected as the president of the Lethbridge District Labor Council in, in 2018. I had been a part of the Labor Council for quite some time as, as a delegate, a PSAC delegate, and I was actually a, uh, elected to be a vice president for PSAC to sit um, around the table at the Alberta Federation of Labor. So that's really kind of where oh, okay. I got to understand um, the broader labor movement across Alberta in terms of some of the, the other unions that sit at the table and their struggles and their victories and, you know, the idea that we're all kind of, you know, working towards the same thing. And that's kind of where I really saw the value and empowerment of our labor council and the fact that we bring together so many union affiliates within our area and just come together. That's the biggest thing um, to talk about our struggles and our victories and what's working and what's not working. And I always say my favorite part of the Labor Council meeting is our affiliate scan, where we just talk about what's going on in our workplaces and our unions. And so, yeah, I've been super proud to be a part of that organization since 2018. I think it's such an important place in our community in terms of really making sure that we can continue to bring up everybody, not just you know unionized workers, but all workers. Um, and, and their families. Do you think that the Labor Council, I mean, not necessarily just under your leadership, but do you think the Labor Council has brought workers together? Like, do you feel like there's real solidarity among the workers in Lethbridge? I think we're seeing solidarity among workers across the board. You know, I think there has been a lot of changes in terms of austerity and the fact that, you know, workers are feeling the brunt of a lot of things. And I think that is where we need to come together more so than ever. Um, I think you can see some really great acts of solidarity within our community. Just recently, when we look at the University of Lethbridge Faculty Association strike, right? I think, you know, they were out on the line for quite some time, a lot longer than they needed to be, should have been, right? We saw unions in our community, unions across Canada come together and show solidarity uh, when it comes to that struggle, right? That strike was a direct action of, you know, cuts to post-secondary education across the board. And all workers knew that we can't stand for that type of, you know, austerity, that type of cutbacks to something that is such an important uh, institution in our community. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, governments are going to are going to be cutting services and, and worker wages and worker positions, and that sort of thing, then it's going to set the example for the private sector as well, right? Because they're gonna say, well, if the government's going to government doesn't care about workers, then we're not going to care about workers either. Right. And the employer will always do the bare minimum, right? The, the bare absolutely. minimum when it comes to the regulatory standards. And we need to continue to push that minimum to be better, right? I think that's our big role. And I always say, like, it's not a race to the bottom, right? And I'm sure you're well aware of that in terms of every gain that we make in the unionized workplace will benefit all workers, right? And any loss will also be a deterrent to, to all workers. More than ever, solidarity coming out of this pandemic is front and foremost. We've had to change a little bit in terms of how we do our work when it comes to, you know, working remotely, working more in silos. I think that's some of the struggles that the Labor Council and, and unions in general are going to have to really work towards um, going forward. Yeah, absolutely. So the opposite of red tape reduction. Exactly. <laughs> interested in your thoughts on a recent development. So what are your thoughts on the Starbucks unionization efforts here in Northridge? Uh, that is absolutely fantastic news. I think um, all the power to them. I think it's not easy to get a certification drive like that in a no workplace of that nature. I really do hope it comes forward. It's, it's about time. I don't see a negative to that. I think it'd be best for all workers. I think it'd be really a huge step forward when it comes to re unionizing and organizing the retail workforce. Totally agree. And um, this, there was a location in Surrey, British Columbia, that just uh, got approval from the BC Labor Relations Board. So like they announced their intention after the Lethbridge workers. Oh, they have great. a 
Yeah, I think they have a different approval process in BC, which is a little bit more streamlined. Speaking and, of red tape reduction. And were they going to be unionized with the same union, United Steelworkers? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Steelworkers. I'm pretty sure everybody's using Steelworkers in Starbucks Makes because they, yeah. they organized the one in Victoria. And, and on that note, if, uh, if they're successful here in Lethbridge, I believe that's the first time Steelworkers is represented in Lethbridge. They don't have mm -hmm. other... We do have representation uh, okay. in uh, Home Builders Employer. Oh, okay. So like uh, Triple M or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, I'd, okay, yeah. cool. And do they participate in the Labor Council? Yes, we do have oh, a delegate. Our former president was a, a Steelworkers member. Oh, sweet. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, but it'd be great to have Starbucks at the table. It'd be really great to have that perspective. I know that's been an industry and a, and a sector that has been overexploited and precarious work and... Uh, unfair working conditions. So I, I really hope that comes through and, and all the power to them for that. I did just see that there was the news, a new uh, UFCW has unionized a video game. Oh, right. In Calgary, Employer. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So that is great. And I think like, I think the time is now, right? We're kind of in that point where I guess they call it the great resignation, right? Where people are like, you know what? I don't want to stand for this baloney anymore. I want to work in a place that values me, respects me, takes care of, you know, work-life balance. And I think unions could really be an answer to that. And they are an answer to that in terms of the collective agreement is really kind of the bread and butter, the gold standard of making sure that everyone is treated appropriately when, when they're working. Yeah, absolutely. Now we're recording this on the 15th of June and the Alberta Worker released an article just this morning about three uh, unionization drives in Alberta just in the last couple of weeks. So one was at the end of May and two at the beginning of June for, uh, for companies here in Alberta. And I believe it will cover about 60, 60 to 70 workers between the three unionization drives. So that, that's really good. And one of them is another Starbucks up in Calgary. Yeah, fantastic. So yeah, I think yeah, I think we need more of that. More yeah. unionization would be great. We've been trending down for the last mm -hmm. several decades. You know, it's just that union representation is less and less and less, particularly in the private sector. Mm -hmm. And that we probably need more in the private sector than ever. 100%. Yeah. It doesn't need to be just a public sector thing for sure. No, I agree. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate your thoughts on uh, the Left Bridge and District Labor Council and your involvement in that. Um, so I'm being curious, going back to your personal labor history, how has your intersections of marginalization ever influenced the experiences you've had uh, as a worker? And those could be, you know, ethic intersections or gender or orientation or religion or whatever it happens to be it's hard for me to describe because i think things have gone well right but i and i speak that from a, a lens of privilege in terms of my my working my working life some things i don't know maybe if i haven't noticed right because i just kind of accept what happens as i go along i think one of the hardest parts was being a young worker in my sector there was the idea that you know terms and the ability to just kind of stick around precariously was was okay was fair and I think I am in science right so you can you always know that women in science are are underrepresented I think that we are seeing a transition or a change towards the uh, inclusion of that but I think as a worker it's always something that needs to be considered when it comes to to my gender but I, I have uh, like I said the, the Lethbridge and District Research Center is, sorry, the Lethbridge Research Center, not the district, um, is, is a really great employer in, in terms of that sense. I think PSAC has done uh, tremendous work. There's still lots of work to do, but in terms of, of bringing equity to the table, I think that's always been a discussion ongoing within our union uh, to make sure that those types of disadvantages are not taking place in the workplace, right? And, uh, and we're seeing it now in this round of bargaining in terms of um, ensuring that we all get mandatory training on anti-racism and, and anti-black racism and these are things that as a public servant uh, we should be leading the, the way in terms of those types of removing those types of barriers in all work right and that's I don't awesome. know if that really answered your question but that's kind of some of my but, thoughts on, on the yeah, matter it does with your current employer uh, what about your employers the print shop and McDonald's did you notice anything work for those employers to be honest I, I don't think so. And, and I, I know that sounds so like aloof, 
<laughs> um, I just know that I, I had to work hard, to be honest, to, to make ends meet when it was at McDonald's. There was, there was a lot of making sure you picked up as many shifts only because, you know, the wage was, was so low. And I was very lucky because I transferred in from British Columbia who had a higher minimum wage and they actually had to honor that minimum wage, even though it was like six fifty or something when I was here and wow. I was able to transfer in at $9 or something along those lines. That was a huge beneficial things in terms of, of working at McDonald's. But yeah, I, I have to say, I think that my working career has been been okay. Uh, and I know that probably doesn't lead to my my ability to, to fight the good fight, but I understand I've seen so many um, individuals who are just working to make ends meet and their employer is not really empathetic to any of that, right? In terms of making sure that you know, there's a, a living wage. Great. No, that's awesome. Do you have any final thoughts that you want to share with our listeners? The biggest thing is, you know, the labor movement is really what we need to make sure that we hold civil society in check, right? I think we need to remember that our goal is the engine of a social and economic changes um, and that governments are always, have been always historically attacking labor, right? It's actually funny because I was doing a little bit of Lethbridge history. And in 1907, we, we had like a, a nine month coal strike here in Lethbridge. And it actually resulted in one of the first acts, government interventions to reduce the power of our ability to strike. So, you know, it's, it's been that long that uh, unions have been under attack. And I think uh, we have to question, well, what are they, why are they trying to break us down, right? What what are they trying to gain from us? You know, obviously the exploitation of our labor, but the breakdown of our public services and sectors we rely on, right? You can see it today in, in the breakdown of our healthcare system and the move towards privatization. We need to be strong uh, to protect our working lives. Someone told me that its struggle is the state of our lifestyle. And that's, that's fair, but we need to continue to, to bring up society. Every gain we make benefits to all workers, not just our unionized workers. Yeah. I, and I really like that last point. Every gain um, one union makes is p- potential gain for all workers. So I totally agree with that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. If our listeners are interested in following more of your work and find out more about you, where could they where could they go to do that? So if folks want to uh, follow along with the, the work of the Lethbridge and District Labor Council, you can follow us on Facebook. And we also do have our website, lethbridgelabor.ca. Uh, there's some really great updates there locally, as well as what's happening in the broader labor movement across Canada. There's also a, able to sign up there. So if there's some actions that are happening within Lethbridge, and, and that's one thing I didn't touch on, some of the work we've been doing lately is hosting some rallies to protect health care. Uh, we've had a few rallies to um, stand up against some of the other legislation that's been coming down from our current government. If you wanted to get involved and be a part of that action, please check out our website, lethbridgelabor.ca, and you can sign up there. And then there's action alerts go out every so often of things that we're doing in our community uh, to try to make things better for everyone. Awesome. That's great. Yeah. And you helped organize the first May Day March that we've had in Lethbridge for a very long time. Yes. And thank you for organizing that, Kim. It was great to be a part of it. And it was great that we got such good media there. I think it was on the, was it the front page of the Herald? I think so. Yeah. And hopefully next year will be even better. And that's one great thing about Lethbridge. We have an excellent media market that picks up a lot of stuff, which I, I, I think is, I mean, obviously the more we're in the news, the better in terms of the actions we're doing. So. Awesome. So um, yeah. And if anybody wants to follow Alberta Worker, you can check us um, out on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, you can also go to our website, albertaworker.ca. And you can also sign up for our newsletter there. We send out a daily, weekly, and monthly newsletter. The daily newsletter is just a heads up of the, the, the newest a news article that we write. Uh, the weekly is a summary of the most popular articles that week. And then uh, our monthly newsletter is our most popular um, news articles that month. Um, if you like this, uh, this episode and like listening to Christy's story, please rate and review our podcast. You can support the Alberta Worker just by going to albertaworker.ca slash support. You can sign up to be a monthly subscriber or just send in a, a one-time donation. For our next episode, I'll be interviewing Sandra Azakar, who's one of the vice presidents with AUPE. And if you are interested in being a guest on the Alberta Worker podcast, you can email us at podcast at albertaworker.ca. Thank you so much, Christy, for being here. And thank you to all our listeners for tuning in. And as always, solidarity. Thanks, Kim.